Hi, my name is Paul Shepard. I am the, the host of uh, Natural and Regenerated Beekeeping. A couple of people have asked me to introduce myself. Um, they they want to hear who this guy is uh, talking like this. Anyway, um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself um, in my beekeeping career. I am originally from this little island in the Caribbean called Trinidad. Um, lived there most of my life. Um, Trinidad is just about nine miles off the Venezuelan coast. And I started beekeeping in 1984. I did a training, a training course with um, the Ministry of Agriculture in Trinidad. We were given uh, Italian hives, Italian bees, and they were very gentle. And we started beekeeping with those. And then one day, those bees became Africanized bees. Wow, that was uh, that was a change in beekeeping, like. You wouldn't believe it. Um, I went to a friend's house and opened a box and they started stinging me in every, all of my ears, uh, everywhere they could, because I wasn't properly suited up. But um, I had to run and dive in a pond. Yeah, and uh, never do that because they will keep you submerged for as long as they can. Anyway, um, Africanized bees, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, in the Caribbean and in South America is pretty much the kind of bees that you have. Um, my friend, Lyndon Stewart, who, who you may have seen is posting on the, on the group, works exclusively with uh, Africanized bees. And they are extremely productive and also varroa resistant, at least in this part of the woods. So I, um, I, I had about, uh, 20 hives in Trinidad and we produce loads of honey and I worked with bees there for quite a few years. I left, uh, I left um, Trinidad in about um, 2004 and started personal beekeeping again in uh, California about 2007. Met this great old guy who was my mentor, taught me a whole bunch of stuff and um, really wonderful experience. Uh, we moved from California to North Carolina, and that's where I met this guy that changed, changed my life a lot, Carl Chesick, and his, um, his organization called the Center for Honeybee Research. I think they've got a web page and uh, they're on Facebook as well, I think. Anyway, um, they had a whole system that they set up of um, natural versus um, treated or conventional hives. Uh, they weighed hives and we took data. And at that time, this is the scale that we were using to weigh. Uh, of course, they're using digital scales now. Wonderful, wonderful, great organization. I met a lot of great people and I learned a lot from them. I moved to St. Lucia, the Caribbean island of St. Lucia. 2012, I started a, I got, I got asked by the, St. Lucia Social Development Fund. I, we were funded by them to train 20 um, farmers in beekeeping, in beginners beekeeping. And um, we went down to the community center and we thought we we're gonna have 20 people. Well, 50 people arrived and they all wanted to join beekeeping and people were jumping through the windows. And it was an incredible experience for me we ended up teaching 40 people and dividing the group into uh, two sets of, of 20. We got people from St. Lucia to build the, to make the, the bee suits, to build the boxes and to supply the bees. Um, I'm not sure if it had ever been done on that scale before. And for six months, I, I trained all these people. Unfortunately, you know, beekeeping doesn't end after six months. There's always something more. And I'm sorry, we never, we never um, continued visits and, and keeping it going. But it was a great experience. Uh, I have a lot of great photographs from that. I, the second group, again in St. Lucia, which I, um, I was given the opportunity to uh, set up a training, a training um, system for in beginners beekeeping for 
the farmers with disability. Uh, actually, they weren't really be, um, beginners. They had already been keeping bees for a while, but we included a, um, a, a project similar to the uh, North Carolina project of comparing uh, natural bees to um, treated bees, bees kept naturally to bees kept um, that were being treated or kept conventionally. And it, it was wonderful. I'd go down there every um, Sunday and we set it up very similar to how the Center for Honeybee Research had done theirs, following a lot of their protocols. And uh, we had 10 hives of natural and 10 hives of the conventional hives. Of course, this close, we now know that um, the, a very difficult thing to do to get data, but we did come up with some interesting, um, some interesting uh, discoveries. This red here is all the conventional hives and it's based on strength of the hives. And the, the green in the back was the, the green in the back was the natural beekeeping the natural beekeeping hives, which thrived much better than the, um, the conventional beekeeping. I unfortunately wasn't able to continue my, um, my work there. And um, I can tell you that one of the things that came out of this was that you cannot teach people um, who need an, to earn a living um, using a uh, a data gathering project. It's one or the other. So I learned a lot on that in that situation. Um, I, I did a lot of work in the islands, um, teaching beekeeping and meeting different people. This guy is from, um, from Bekwe. If you ever get a chance to go to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, this is a beautiful little island called Bekwe. And this guy was um, looking after he was actually doing it for someone else. This personal guy was doing it for someone else, but he was looking after uh, Kona bees from Hawaii. And those were the gentlest bees I have ever seen in my life. I uh, left the Caribbean yeah, and moved to, uh, this was in um, 2017, I think, yes. I moved first to Portugal. I retired and I was, moved, I was gonna live in Europe. My wife is French American. And we first thought, well, let's go to Portugal because they have good wine. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Uh, um, I meant um, I am Portuguese descent. So I was thinking that we could make it there. I met some wonderful people. Um, um, Paul de Tornado is a center for a natural center. Uh, and uh, they, they host all sorts of natural seminars and these two people were very influential in uh, welcoming me to that community. This is um, Julio and Maria Lopez. They are beekeeping teachers and a great bunch of people. This woman here, um, Marlene Marquez, she had invited me to give a talk in that um, about, I, and it was about uh, glyphosate and the effect on bees. Uh, and, you know, there's a, that's a whole different story. Anyway, I, I'm supposed to keep this to five minutes, but of, of course, I think I passed that already. Um, from Portugal, we, we didn't settle in Portugal. After one year, I moved to France, which I absolutely love. And there's great wine here too. But um, I moved to this community called Solje. It's in central France. Um, this is my dog just coming out of the river, which is in our front yard. And that's Solje in the back. The mayor of this town is um, environmentally, you know, he knows he rides a bicycle. He doesn't use a car. He, he keeps bees, great guy. And this whole area is pesticide free. So wonderful area to start doing natural beekeeping. Uh, this is my this is my house and my my garden. I've made a I've done a terrace garden and do organic gardening, and these are my hives. And uh, yes, mm -hmm. a little bit of wine. I've made these hives out of scrap wood. 
um, from the house and I have, uh, they're about, the walls are about three to four um, centimeters thick. And they've stood up very well to three winters so far. So that's pretty good. I do, um, I've set up a beekeeping business and I help people with um, managing their hives. Um, this is uh, on the banks of the river in, in, the, in the main city, Montmorillon. And uh, a very good friend of mine who's an artist, he did these hives. You can see his artwork, fantastic. And the bees are doing well here after three years. And these, this strain of bees, which is, um, it's 50%, uh, I think, uh, well, it's partly um, Buckfast and Karnica. So I, after three years, and these bees were bought from a, a, a guy that treated bees, they're still doing well in that town. So the urban beekeeping is um, pretty, is pretty good there. I also help other people different places. Well, I, I hope that gives you an idea of who I am and what I do. If you want to find out a little bit more, um, you can always uh, message me on Facebook Messenger. I'm always happy. And um, I will make my uh, email um, public so that you can, you, if you have any questions. The purpose of this, of this group really is to link ideas. I am not um, a master beekeeper or, or, or big trainer or a scientist, but I'm interested and I get it. I get it that if we go the natural way, we will save the bees. The bees are saving themselves and we just have to follow what they are doing and, and give them the environment that they need to prosper. So I'm just here to share ideas with you and to, um, to create a situation where we can all learn. Okay, so see you in France someday, maybe, who knows? <laughs> Goodbye.